Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Margarita and I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mama of four kiddos and on this channel I share all things motherhood and homemaking and recipes and all of that good stuff. Today I'm sharing how I transformed my kitchen floors all by myself using these floor pop tiles. We live in a house that was built in the 80s. We bought this house about four years ago, I believe now, and we remodeled almost every single room except for the kitchen, the laundry room, and the half bath behind me. This corner or area has been put in the back burner for two years now, just because something always comes up. Um, so this year this summer actually we were planning to do our big kitchen remodel but with everything going on in the economy with all the shortages in the construction industry we decided to hold off until next summer so if things are well next summer hopefully we'll get to it if not you know we'll just keep putting it back i don't want to do this big remodel during uh, fall or winter just because we do homeschool and that's just going to disturb our day disrupt our day so I wanted to find a temporary solution to kind of get us through until we can do this huge remodel just to make us all happier with the space that we do have. Um, my husband installed a new sink for me in, in the kitchen, I did a lot of decluttering and cleaning and then I knew I wanted to find a solution for the flooring. I first I considered doing like a stencil. Um, on the floor, but I knew with all of the layers of paint, the primer, the two coats of paint, um, the polyurethane that you need on top of that, that was a lot of drying time and which is with the kids downstairs all day long. I knew I could not, you know, close off the kitchen. I knew that we needed our kitchen to eat food. So that was not an option that, we, you know, I knew that was not going to work. So I found this solution on Amazon. You can definitely go to floorpops.com and they have a lot more prints to choose from. But these are basically peel and stick tiles. And at the, the time I bought these, these were $13 for the box and there's 10 tiles. Um, so they're like very thick tiles. You just peel them and stick them. They're very sticky. Um, I'm going to jump right in and tell you guys how I did it. It did take me, uh, I believe, four afternoons to do this, a couple, a couple of hours every single day for four days, just because it is a very big project. And you know, I am a mom. I have to cook dinner and lunch and breakfast, and I had to clean and take care of the kids every single day. So I did take stretch it out, and I'm glad I did because I took my time and everything is neatly done. And I did learn quite a few things along the way, which I will share with you. So let's jump right in. So this is everything I started out with. I have my tiles, a cutting mat, which I had from my sewing days, a utility knife, a metal ruler, some kitchen aid scissors, and a counter gauge for the difficult corners. So this is the before, our lovely brown tile. It is in the kitchen, the eating nook, the laundry room, and the half bath. I don't believe this tile is original to the house since we did find some boxes of tile in the garage when we moved in. Off the kitchen is our family room, which used to have carpet, which we tore out and replaced with hardwood. So that kind of is where our remodel ended. But I did paint our cabinets um, inside and out when we moved in, just because they had a very strong smell to it. But that is about it. First thing I did was clean the floors very well, and I found that hand washing was the best way to ensure I picked up every single piece of dirt. The instructions recommend that you find the center of the room and start laying the tiles that way. To me, they needed to perfectly line up with the hardwood, so this is how I started. The good thing is the tile in the kitchen is a little bit lower than the hardwood, so when I laid the floor pops tile, it raised the kitchen floor right up to the hardwood. At this point, it was very easy. Just peel and stick the tile. I left the hard corners and edges for last, and I recommend doing that. Put the big pieces in, and then go back and cut the pieces that you need to go into the corners and edges. Thank you. 
I tried to find the best side to match the tiles up with, even though they didn't always fit perfectly with this print. But I doubt anyone will be down on their knees trying to find the tiles that don't line up. I did not have a rubber roller to make sure the tiles adhere properly and my Home Depot was completely out. So I just used a rolling pin and rolled it over the tiles to make sure they stick down. On the first day I worked on the breakfast nook. On day two I worked on the laundry room and the half bath. And on day three and four I worked on my kitchen. I ordered 20 boxes to start out with, however, they are very heavy, so you can only order 10 in one transaction, and then Amazon splits them when they ship them, so in total I got 4 large heavy boxes. I ended up running out of tile when I got to my kitchen, and I had to order 10 more, but that was way too much, and I ended up returning 6 of the boxes. And to return them, I just took them to UPS, and they packed and shipped them for me. So in total, I spent $312 for tile, which I think is a great deal to completely transform these floors. Around the vents, I just used the backing that sticks to the tile to create a stencil. Then I traced it onto the tile and used my KitchenAid scissors to cut it out. I had two pairs of sharp KitchenAid scissors which I completely destroyed during this process. I ended up tossing them once I was done and just bought myself two brand new pairs. Amazon has a really great price in them, I believe they are under $9. Now, the next day, I noticed that the tile around the vents was starting to pop up on the edges. It's almost like it did not want to stick to the cold tile. So I decided to use an adhesive that I had on hand. It is the Gorilla Glue Construction Adhesive, and I went back and pulled up the tiles that were not sticking down completely, and I applied the glue around the edges. It seems like the smaller pieces and the pieces around the vents did not stick down all the way. This may have something to do with the type of flooring I have or the fact that the tile is very cold. So the next day I went and got more glue and from that point on I decided to use the glue on every piece of tile. So the tiles in my laundry room and my half bath and the kitchen are glued on and only about one quarter of the tiles in the kitchen nook are glued on. And I already noticed more coming up so I highly recommend getting an adhesive to help glue them on especially in high traffic areas and on very cold tile floors floors. For areas that are a little bit harder, like around the toilet, um, I just created a stencil with computer paper and I cut it out. And when I get a good fit, then I'm going to trace this onto the tile and that way I have a perfect fit. And to make the stencil, I should have started with this. Um, I make a piece of paper that is 12 by 12 that goes fits perfectly over the tile. And many people use um, the back end of the tile, but I found it too thin and flimsy and it wouldn't stay put. So I'm just using computer paper. So 12 by 12. And I'm going to have a tile that goes right over here. So I just line it up. And I'm going to just use my fingernail and trace it around the toilet seat and then I'm just going to cut that off and then just make sure it fits perfectly and do any more trimming if you need to if you cut too much make a new stencil um, and then trace it over the tile and that's your perfect stencil so I cut out the tile and make sure it fits before I take the backing off and it's a good, good fit. There you go. I find the hardest things to do is around the door jams. So what I do is I create templates and I just kind of trace it around and cut it. And then I will trace this on the tile. So just a perfect fit. Then I'm putting it on the tile like this and tracing it cutting it. Good. 
And for smaller pieces like this, I just measure with my ruler how big I need the piece and then I cut it with my utility knife. And now I am on day four and I wanted to say that I ended up using two tubes of glue on my tiles and I have a little bit left from the second tube to go back and fix any of the flooring that does come up. And I saw at Home Depot that they had a primer for peel and stick tile. However, the directions on that said to use it only on a porous surface. And examples of a porous surface are wood, plywood, paper, cardboard, and so on. So basically something that the primer can seep into. So that would not have worked with my flooring, which is why I think the Gorilla Glue is a good option for that. My advice is just take your time. If you get tired, take a break, eat some food, or leave it for the next day. You will be living with the tile for a while, so make it perfect because one tile, just eight of an inch off, can ruin the entire flooring. Make sure each tile lines up perfectly. If you are using scissors to cut the tile, they will end up with some adhesive on them from the backing of the tile. And to clean that off, I just use some oil and dish soap, just regular old cooking oil. And I ended up cleaning them quite often to make sure that I could still cut through the paper and tile. I found that I reached for my utility knife whenever I had straight cuts to make and for my scissors whenever I had more complex cuts. And also the cutting mat was amazing to have. Otherwise I would have been cutting directly on the ceramic tile. The mat is cut proof and again I got it years ago from Joann's Fabric but I will link something similar down below. So once I finished with sticking on the tile, I applied caulk to all of the edges and this gave everything a beautiful and finished look just like real tile. I used the DAP Alex Plus caulk which you can find at any hardware store and I used the one for the trims and I believe even Target carries it. You also need a bucket of water and a rag. Just apply your caulk in a thin line and use your finger to spread and smear it. And just use the towel to wipe off your finger often and the bucket to go ahead and clean your rag often. You can watch a YouTube video on how to apply caulk if you're not comfortable doing so. I will link the video I watched down below which was super helpful. Well friends, this is it. The floors are done and I have to say I love how they turned out. The print is a little busy in such a large area like the kitchen, but I will choose it any day over the old brown tile. Keep in mind that with this print, you will probably have a hard time finding a rug that matches. However, I have always loved the natural jute rugs and I think it looks beautiful on this floor. However, I'm still trying to find a good option for the kitchen. Let's take a quick little flashback to the before. I definitely think it was well worth the $312 for the tile and a couple of afternoons of work for me. Now I am not in a huge hurry to tear down this kitchen. I actually quite like it with the new flooring. I have to say that I love how well the new tile hides dirt. It is very hard to see any dirt on it unless you are down on the floor yourself. With the brown tile, we could see every single crumb on it and I felt like I had to wash or mop the floors every single day. I love how the tile completely transformed my small laundry room and powder room. I feel that this busy tile works very well for smaller rooms because it's a very nice wow factor to an otherwise very boring space. 
I didn't mention this before, but I did remove the vanity in the bathroom to do the tile underneath, which was really easy to do. Just because you can see under it, I wanted to make sure I got all the way under it. But I did not remove the toilet, I just worked around it and I think it looks very nicely done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.